August and we want to look at this passion flower vine. It's just recently started flowering here. Uh, we're kind of on the cool end for this plant. It's very common uh, in North Carolina all the way down to the coast. It's a plant of thickets. It's a vine that wanders around in things and spreads very rapidly underground, makes big jungly uh, thickets. It does have tendrils, which is how it climbs. And it has these exceedingly beautiful flowers. Uh, these are not quite open. They will be later today, but we already have separate pictures of the flowers. Attractive lobed foliage. There are the leaves. Nice glossy. So it's a beautiful uh, garden plant, beautiful vine to grow. But be aware that it will start popping up all over the place. Another one back here, a couple more of them. So it's just been wandering around in this corner of the garden for quite a while. I would like to relocate it to somewhere where I'm less worried about its invasiveness. But even though it pops up everywhere, it's not all that easy to separate. Uh, you dig one up, it'll often just die because, in fact, uh, what you're getting is an underground stem. It's not really the roots. So that has to be treated, actually, as a cutting. can be grown from, from seeds. They make a fruit. They're called may pops. Uh, we don't get a whole lot of fruit here. As I said, we're a little cool for this plant. Uh, in areas where it's warmer, they get covered with fruits, and those fruits actually are used to some extent as a food uh, source. They're kind of bland tasting to me. Some of the other passion flowers, of which there are very many, uh, are more used as tropical fruits. Um, this one, this is the only, well, not the only, there is one other. This is the main hardy species. There are hundreds of tropical ones, and they all have beautiful Similar flowers in all different colors, but this is the only one that you can really grow outdoors. Actually, there is another one, Passiflora lutea, with little tiny flowers, but it's sort of insignificant. This is the important one, and what it's mainly all about is sleep. Uh, so it contains uh, non-addictive uh, sleep-promoting compounds. They're very helpful. Uh, it has been used as a tea, so the entire above ground part can be used. It's also been, as with many other sedative sorts of herbs, put into smoking mixes. Uh, so any kind of uh, insomnia, also nervous tension, irritability, uh, PMS, uh, it can assist with drug withdrawal, especially from uh, particular uh, drugs, and what else can I say about it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. So we tincture the entire above ground part of it. You can also just dry it and take it as tea. Uh, the fruits are also used, flowers, the whole shebang. And what else to say? Uh, so it can be layered with some difficulty and divided. It will grow from seed. Germination is erratic. Uh, I have had pretty good germination, but it's not predictable at all. Just plant the seeds and just kind of wait. And hope for the best, and after a while you get seedlings popping up. So we have finally got a pretty good supply of these to sell now. It's taken a while. There's one with a nice open flower on it. So the flower, it's passion flower because all the different parts of the flower have meanings, you know, the five disciples or the, I don't know, what. You can tell a whole story about the passion based on this flower, apparently. So that's that, Passiflora incarnata.